Good morning, Maytown. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that you are all well and you suffered through this snowzilla that we've had. Nothing like last year. We uh, open your Bible, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles again. Uh, we missed two in-person services here online have been faithful. Uh, snow first Sunday and then uh, last week because of the snowy conditions here, uh, icy roads, possibility of rain coming and some COVID protocols, we had to uh, cancel that one. So uh, it's exciting to be back and we will have our in-person service again this Sunday. Um, I want to pick it back up with what's been stirring in my heart, what God gave me last Sunday. Well, it's difficult to cast vision just over video and not in person. And I pray that all of you uh, listening today have watched last Sunday. These two um, messages connect. And um, I guess I've called this part two, If and Amen, as I titled last Sunday's message and as I just, in, as a George-ism, we call it George-isms around here, as I understand what God's saying to us. So let's take a look together. You're going to need your Bible. Look in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 2. I want to go back to, to chapter 7 here in a few minutes, but, but I want you to show, show you something here that God's showing me. All right. In Second Chronicles chapter 2, verse 1, it says this, now Solomon decided to build a house for the name of the Lord and a royal palace for himself. By the way, that royal palace for himself isn't applicable to what God's telling us. Although when we build the building, I may put an office in there for myself. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, here we go. Solomon decided... Here the vision of King David to build the temple of God was imparted to Solomon's heart. In other words, it was passed down from one generation to the next. But the word says Solomon decided. I think it's no little thing to point this out. Back in 2 Chronicles 28, I'll put it on the screen for you, we read this. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my brethren, and my people, I had intended to build a permanent home for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God. So I made preparations to build it. But God said to me, look at verse 3, God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name because you are a man of war and you have shed blood. In other words, now in context, here's what we know. It was in David's heart. David had the vision. David wanted to build. It was in his heart. He made preparations for it. He had plans. But God passes over David, says no. And he just gives us two reasons here. He was a man of war, and he had the shed blood of others on his hands. Now, let me plea with you to understand this. That's just, it's not like that simple, two things. Oh, you're a man of war, and you've got shed blood and you're on your record. No. There's a, there's a multitude of reasons in the sovereignty of God. In other words, look at it this way. Anytime you move forward, anytime we're, we're moving forward, we're, we're going to a season, you have to understand that in the sovereignty of God, there may be one thing or two things or three things or no things or a, or a multitude of things that are, that are plain yet within the heart of God when you're in the will of God and you understand the sovereignty of God as you're following God's vision... You may see part of it. He may tell you, nope, you're a man of war and you have blood in your hands, but that's not it. But what is it is God is sovereign. Somebody, God, somebody get a hold of this. God is sovereign. He'll give you what you need. Go with what you have. In verse 6 we read, and I don't have this on the screen, but in 2 Chronicles 28 verse 6, he said to me, this is the Lord saying to David, your son Solomon is the one who shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be a son to me, and I will be a father to him. In other words, for reasons God had determined, Solomon and his generation was to pick up the vision and build the temple of God that David wanted to do, but God said no to him, and that most importantly, God was sovereign, 
and he will determine time, seasons, generations to do specific things through specific people for the kingdom of God. Here's what I know the Holy Spirit's telling me. I believe God has now chosen this generation. I can only speak to the Maytown Church. That's where I pastor. That's where my heart is. That's where my call is. But God has chosen us this season right here. This could be applicable to other churches, other pastors, missionaries. I pray that it encourages you. I can't speak to that. But I can speak to the revealed nature of God. And I make reference to that a lot. What you see God do in the past, when you see His heart, whether it's specific in context to a nation or a people group or a specific something that's going on, the revealed nature of heart is the sovereignty of God and it's for any people group, any tribe, any nation on the face of the earth. Here's what I hear the Holy Spirit telling me. God has chosen this generation here at Maytown. God has imparted the vision to my heart. And this generation, this church, it was originally birthed back. I'm the, I'm the eighth pastor here. This vision, the land they purchased next door to this land and this land they purchased, it was all within a vision to be this, this Pentecostal church, this firebrand of God, that God was going to do something supernatural here in a Bodunk Maytown known for its tavern that then finally closed down, right, along the I-5 corridor. Here we are. We don't have the demographics that people can just walk here and fill the place at 10,000. We're not in the city, but we are on the I-5 corridor. We are in the county. We are here. We believe, and God is God. And even though the last pastor, Pastor Al, let me just share this with you. I didn't know Pastor Al or Vicki, his wife. He had made much preparation. Uh, I inherited his plans. He had building plans. He had all kinds of stuff. The vision to build is passed on to this generation. I caught the vision. It's changed. God has tweaked that. But I get it. And I know now in my 11th year, I have decided. God has, has put it upon me, and I have decided yes and amen. And the board and this church has decided yes and amen. It is time. We accept this. It is time for us to build. Now, please understand this. I, I'm sorry I have to say this to you, but I stand here with no pride in my heart thinking that you think I'm someone special. I'm not. I am no spiritual giant. I'm nothing special other than a man called and faithful. And I will tell you this, I am faithful to the call of God. That I will say. And I'm faithful to this church. And I'm not suggesting that Pastor L had, was a man of war, had blood in his heart. It's just that God is sovereign. This is what I want you to understand. And God will impart vision through generations. I saw this in my last church, Evergreen Christian Community, from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next, and the vision is passed on. Every generation will have to, as God brings it before them, decide. Solomon decided. We have decided. Again, the precursor meaning God has imparted it to us and basically saying, what do you want to do? Now, after Solomon finishes building the temple, they bring the ark into it and they dedicate it to the Lord. We saw this last week, but let me pick this back up for you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, now when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down. It's interesting. We believe Ezra was the author, likely, of First and Second Chronicles. Ezra says, fire, fire, fuego. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. The priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the house. All the sons of Israel seeing the fire, seeing the fire. What fire? The fire that came from heaven and consumed the offerings. And the glory of the Lord, verse 3, filled the house. It came upon the house. And they bowed down on the pavement with their faces to the ground. And they worshiped and gave praise to the Lord, saying, Truly He is good, truly his loving kindness is for everlasting. Folks, let me tell you something. Um, I'm a little old school, and I know I don't keep up with the times. Got my favorite black vest on again today. <laughs> 
But here's what I see. I see Ezra telling us that the fire of God came down over the approval of the temple and the prayers offered and the sacrifices in that place. Again, Old Covenant people, Old Covenant dispensation. Three times in three verses, Ezra records, the fire came, the glory of God. I have them underlined, the glory of the Lord filled, the glory of the Lord filled. Here's the way I understand this. When you're doing something right and God likes it, God shows up. Just get that if you don't get anything else. When you're doing something right and you're in the will of God and they were in the will of God and they were doing something right, God shows up. God shows up in the house. Now here's what I know. Yes, this is all about the temple. It's all about Solomon. It's all about his covenant people, Israel, and the Old Testament dispensation, the Old Covenant. But here's what I know. The revealed nature of God. When God's happy, boom, God shows up. Oh, God, shut up. That we would be in the will of God. All I can say is God send the consuming fire. Send the fire. Send your presence. Where is the glory of God in the churches? I Look, snow, COVID, ifs, buts, ands, junk, garbage. God, we keep showing up. Bring the fire. Bring the fuego into the house of God. Let the glory of God... I pray, I pray right now that the glory of God would fill this room all by myself to where I can't even stand here and preach. <laughs> and then for Sunday, God, fill the house that we would fall on our faces and rejoice in the Lord. Now, for those of you who saw last week's video message, and that's all there was, there was no in-person, again, because of snowy roads and COVID, we were exposed and we're fine. I felt the Lord was saying to us, and again, there was no in person, but on the video, and I pray that you watched it, that we were to all take the ifs, the ifs in our minds and in our prayers and all of those stumbling blocks and take them back to the Lord with a yes and amen in humility and faith. Throwing in another Georgism, you can put it this way. Go back to God and say, I'm in. I'm in, God. Count me in. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. That God was going to bring a breakthrough this year in 2022 here at Maytown. I'm excited about it. Thus, following the word that I brought you last Sunday that I titled, If and Amen, If and amen for 2022. Let me just say this and then I want to pray. Today's a day of prayer. Hang on. If we are in the will of God here at Maytown, which I believe we are, and we take the what if, the what if we build this year, and we put it into a prayer proclamation that God, we will build in the land. And we would say, Holy Spirit, come and send your glorious presence among us here as we worship. And move past, move us past any doubt and obstacles that come our way. That we would see the fulfillment of the vision you have given us in this land. So I want to pray that. Father, I, we say to the if of your presence, yes and amen because we see the revealed nature of God and we hang on to the promises of God for this generation. Father, we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore according to the word. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire, Lord. Send the fire, Lord. Send your presence today. Right here, right now, in this room, in our meetings Sunday, God, in our midweek meetings, God, come through us and among us, your people. That we will keep all things as our sign says, simply Jesus. And let the glory of God fill us in this, these temples. These bodies, these temples in this house of God. And lead us on by faith, God, through this new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Are you with me at home? Raise your hand. i got to remember which hand's in the camera. Raise your hand. All right. Going back to our text, 
Solomon. Then in verse 12, the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and he said to him, I've heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. In other words, I've heard and agree with your prayer, Solomon. The implication from silence is this. If there was no vision, there would be no prayers. And if there were no prayers, there would be no temple. And if there was no temple, there would be no fire and no vision fulfilled. Again, if we take our if and amen for 2022 and we thank God for our vision, let us all believe that he will hear our prayers too. So let's pray this. Father, we thank you for the vision of our predecessors those that have gone before us, the seven pastors, and specifically Pastor Al that went before me, to buy this land, to inhabit the land, to offer prayer and praise from this tent, this tabernacle now in our wilderness. Father, we have inhabited the land. We have moved on to the land by faith that you will build that permanent temple there, just as if we're in our tabernacle now, waiting for our temple to come, God. And we pray that you will impart the vision into the hearts of all of the people that come here in person and all of you online. Receive the vision of God. Receive it. Receive it. If this is your storehouse and you're being fed here, receive the vision of God. Receive it through, the, through this telecast, God. And that we will honor no one man, but that the vision is from God and that we all here at Maytown say yes and amen. I am in, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God then brings Solomon a promise. Got ahead of myself here. Here we go. When I shut up the heavens so there is no rain, or command the lo locusts to devour the land and send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal the land. Seek and turn. We do a lot of seeking. We do a lot of crying. We do a lot of belly aching. But I don't know that we're doing a lot of turning. I can only speak for myself. I can become complacent. I have become complacent. I seek a lot, but I don't turn on everything I need to turn from. Have you ever thought about these two verses? Here's what God is saying. I've approved of the temple and have demonstrated that by my fire. Remember, that fire that came in there on those sacrifices was the same fire that came on the altar. The same fire that came down over the tabernacle. The same fire that came in the temple. And on the day of Pentecost, then came upon these temples. As Acts tells us, there was a fire of, as of cloven tongues that came and appeared to land on all of those. In other words, God approving from the altar to the tabernacle, to the temple, to these temples. The fire of God approving. Now this temple, second uh, uh, covenant, the new covenant man. The new, new Testament church, that the presence of God is now within us, not in any one building. There's a wonderful presence of God. <laughs> there's, a, there's a wonderful presence of God in here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just give him praise right now at home. Just give him praise. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for what you're doing, Jesus. Thank you, God. It's not about shouting. It's, it's not about notes. It's about you, God. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Here's what God is saying. Every generation, every culture starts infiltrating and redefining the church. It's happened over the ages and doctrinally, positionally, men offer their commentaries and pull Pentecost out and pull tongues and fire out and and you have your historical revisionism all working together with state laws and liberalism and you end up with a lot of people crying out but not a lot of people turning. God is saying, look, 
when your heart gets hard, I'm going to send rain and locusts and pestilence. And you'll know it and you'll see it. And when that happens, what are you going to do? Stop, turn, confess, pray, humble yourselves. And that, what will happen then? I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins and I will heal that land. Now, you know I'm all big on context and I mentioned this last Sunday. But I'm asking God. I'm, I'm wanting to turn from the things I know and I'm asking God for the revelation for, to reveal to me individually and corporately what we must turn from here to bring the hand of the Lord back down upon us. You know, I'm big on context. You know that this prophecy in Chronicles seven fourteen was directed at the nation of Israel. But when you look at that bigger picture, and I shared this last Sunday, right? It's the revealed nature of God, so it doesn't matter who, na which nation calls out, which people group call out. God is willing to hear and turn. God is willing to hear and turn. I don't know where you are in your life or your walk, but God is willing to hear and turn. And forgive your sins and heal your land, heal your families. In other words, it shows us a heart that seeks the obedience of praise in his covenant people. That's the immediate context. And a heart of love to bless all of his people throughout all the ages who are called by his name, the New Testament church. And of course now through Jesus Christ, that same heart of God is aimed toward any who call upon the name of the Lord. That's why the Holy Spirit is speaking to us through this text today. Again, God spoke to Solomon at the end of one season, the building of the temple with instructions for the next. In other words, the fire comes down and it verifies, again, verifies the temple, verifies the vision. Here, here's what I want you to see. God, is, God verifies the vision. God send the fire here Sunday to verify the vision. Send the power of God here to verify the vision. And he gives instructions. I believe these instructions are for us here. If you fall away, if you become hard of heart, people groups do, realize it, feel the judgment of the Lord upon you, cry out, turn, humble, turn, and receive it. You've got to receive the forgiveness. You can, look, you've got to receive the fire, you've got to receive the, the, the condemnation, you've got to receive the forgiveness. We are now in our building year and season here, 2022. It's going to bring about a lot of change, a lot of moving dirt. We now to take our, need to take our if and amen for 22, and we need to pray. Agree with me in prayer. Jesus, we come before you, and when you pray, and we seek your face for your presence, your power, and your glory, send your fire. Again, send your fire. God, do not forsake us. And use us and this place for your kingdom glory to bring the multitudes to the saving grace of Jesus Christ for salvation. So we now humble ourselves personally, individually, consider our wicked ways and the little foxes of sin that run up and down through our culture and the walls of our hearts as we now turn back to the Lord to our confession and we say yes and amen to the healing of the land and forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Amen. As I said, in a similar way, spiritual way, we've just completed this two-year season, 20 and 21, and it was directed towards the preparation for the building for the house here at Maytown. We had to do a gopher study. We found favor in the land. I don't know if there's any Monza gophers out here, but they sure didn't like the taste of the praise or the sound of the worship or the prayers offer. We have one guy here, Charlie, when we have a mole comes up, he just starts walking and praying. That's how he gets rid of the moles. We work towards our new building site, our building design. We hired an engineer firm to work on our plans to figure out the county process and the permitting. We have, by faith, inhabited the tubernacle, we call it, on the new piece of land. We're on the land. We're inhabiting the land. We've taken a hold of that promised land of the vision. We're there now. And we're not coming back to the mobile home. We're going to rededicate this unto the kids. Call it the hub. 
and the children will come and, and, the, and the youth and the children will build in here, right? We're inhabiting the land because of the vision. We're believing. We've suffered through some hardships in our tabernacle out there, in our closet because it's cold or it's hot or it's in the pot, nine days old, whatever. We go indoors, we go outdoors, we go under the maple tree. We rake all the leaves in the winter of the maple tree. Come on, it's a season. But we say yes and amen. Lord, bring the fire. Honor the vision. Honor the vision, God. We're believing by faith. We can now all put our hands on ourselves. And we say, Father... We now take all of our ifs and doubts and we ask for a willing, giving heart from all the people, from all the people to provide, Father. Provide for the vision, to catch the vision, to provide for the vision, and in doing so proclaim that the, that the provision will come into, for the new building. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something. I, Lord, quicken me back to Moses. I had to look it up because I didn't know the exact recipe. But back in Exodus 36, Moses says, bring, bring stuff for the tabernacle. Daily, every morning, people brought stuff. And, the, and God assigned builders and those who could help, those who had gifts, they came and they worked on the, on the tabernacle. I see that same dynamic here with the volunteers and the people that can do this or this or this or that. And the goods and services that are, that are being offered up and volunteered towards this building. Finally, in Exodus 6, 36, Moses said, tell the people, stop. Tell the people, stop, we have enough goods and services to complete the vision. Oh, God, that we wouldn't have to beg for tithes and offerings and for resources, that the Lord would just move. This is what I want. I don't want to hire some firm to come in here to raise money for us. I don't even want to go to the bank. I will leverage and do as the Lord in my heart puts me forth to do. We've paid this off. We are debt free. We have money and resources prepared for this. I pray the rest, the, the rest of the resources come in for the building in Jesus' name and that I can stand before the people and say, time out, time out. Just stop for now. Stop, please, for now. We have enough to finish the vision. Glory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last Sunday we were here together. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Last Sunday we were here, the last Sunday we were here together in person was Christmas Eve because of the two snow days. And I, I told you then in a spiritual sense, I said this last Sunday, I sent the people home to their tents just like Joshua did in Second Chronicles 7 verse 10. And we sent them home rejoicing and happy of heart because of the goodness of the Lord has shown us and to all the congregation of Maytown and hope for the new year. It was a wonderful God-filled time. That's when I went home rejoicing personally for what the Lord has done in me and the call to pastor this church. I'm very thankful to have this call in my life. There were a lot of challenges we went through the last two years especially. And we are embracing a new year and believing. That's when I, I started to ponder through all of the things that, that will have to happen on this land next year. I thought about all the resources and debt and, and, and favor with the county and, you know, all of the ifs, all of the ifs that I can't control that I need to move and put in the, at the feet of Jesus for this to happen. And again, little did I know that the first two Sundays I have these big two questions. What if, what, do we close church, snow, COVID, if, 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 what, if. It just adds to it. Ah, but I'm not despaired. As I prayed about this message today, the Lord took me back to the book of Mark. I want you to turn to Mark chapter 9 right now in your Bibles at home. And I know you have your Bibles out. I know you do. This is a two-way screen. I can see you, and yes, I can see you too. You didn't know this was a two-way screen. I can see you sitting right there. All right, get that Bible out. Turn it. Just teasing. Turn it to the book of Mark. Here in Mark chapter 9, let me just set the stage. We're going to go to verse 14 about Jesus and his disciples have just come down off the mountain where Jesus was transfigured with Elijah and Moses. We went through the book of Mark, I think, two years ago, and Lord quickened this back to me about the ifs. 
right? About the ifs of life that stuck with me. And again, the whole counsel, the whole gospel, the, the, the whole word of God as it works together to implement the vision and the promises. And so I went back there and I, and I looked again. They'd just come down off the Mount of Transfiguration, again, where Jesus, Elijah and Moses, or the New Covenant, the Law and the Prophets of the Old Covenant, they met in agreement on the mountain. And they come down, and they come down into a large crowd, and they see some of the Jewish scribes arguing with the people. Note, please, that the scribes in ancient Israel were learned men whose business was to study the law, transcribe it or translate it, and write commentaries on it. The problem was the scribes were beyond interpretation of the scripture. They, they went beyond that, and they added many man-made traditions to what God had said. Thus you could say they became professionals at spelling out the letter of the law, but they were missing the spirit of the law. Verse 16, Jesus asked them what the discussion was all about. Now look at Mark 9, verse 17. And one of the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it slams him to the ground, and, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. And I told your disciples to cast it out, and they wouldn't do it. Or they could not do it, the word says. Verse 19, And he said to them, Oh, look at this on your screen. I have it underlined for you. Oh, unbelieving generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. Let me tell you something. I don't want to be too extra scriptural here, but let me read something into this verse 19 that I get out of it. Oh, unbelieving generation. In other words, if you have disbelief, Jesus is saying, how long will I be with you or how long will you not get what I'm trying to tell you? How long shall I be here and you not get this? And because you don't get this, you can't do this on your own. Because you don't get me. If you don't get me, you can't get this. Therefore, bring him to me rather than do this yourself. Put your hands on your heart. Father, I just pray right now that we would see the scriptures. We know our place, but we know the power. We know the promises that you've given us. We know, Lord, that we are to believe by faith. We know how we are to pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We know the word says that even greater things than these will we do on earth than what you did if we only believe. Father, we just ask now, for just a, a renewing of our spirit, a renewing of our hope, a renewing of the promises of God, an impartation of the Holy Spirit. Bring the fire, bring the fire, bring the fire of God, the presence of God upon us, God. We are your people. We're your temples, God. Touch us, anoint us, encourage us, God, I pray. And take any unbelief out in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Those words, unbelieving, boy, did it speak to me. I thought about this, all of the ifs I have. You know, I'm playing on words there, but the, the ifs that Satan tries to cause and does cause doubt with, which then manifest into unbelief or disbelief, that becomes this huge strong man or stumbling block. Stumbling block in your actions, your prayers. Unbelieving generation. Unbelieving generation. Look at verse 20. They brought the boy to him, that's Jesus. And when he saw him, immediately the Spirit threw him into a convulsion and, and falling to the ground. He began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. A lot of things has been happening to a lot of people since childhood. We just rebuke that right now. We rebuke those evil spirits. We rebuke those disbeliefs, those ifs, those demonic things that are happening over the people's lives in Jesus' name. And we say, whom the sun sets free, you are free indeed. 
The father continues. Verse 22, watch this. It has often thrown him into the fire. Not the fire of God's presence, but the fire and water of, of Satan's destruction. It has often thrown him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can, if you can, Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Look at verse 23. If you can, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you can, let me play on this a little bit. Sir, are you asking me if I can? All things are possible to them who believe all possible are all things are possible to him who believes immediately boy's father cried out and said i do believe help me with my unbelief jesus rebukes that spirit out of that boy later the disciples questioned him privately and he said lord why couldn't we drive it out verse 29 says look this kind cannot come out by anything but prayer let me tell you something. Vision may be started in the heart of man, given by God, just as David passed it on and Solomon decided, and just as we have decided, it's not automatic. Nothing's automatic. We have a scheduled prayer meeting here on Monday nights. It also had to be canceled the last two Monday nights. I would encourage you, come and pray. Some of the things, some of the ifs that we will encounter will only come out through prayer. They will only come out through prayer and fasting. I got some comments the other day. You guys always call for a fast the beginning of each year. I'm not saying I am not calling for a fast. The Lord is stirring me right now to fast. We were going to this weekend meet with the board privately in a board retreat so, retreat so we could pray, get this vision consummated as we understand it bring it to the people that had to be canceled because of snow and covid but it's only the second sunday of the year and i will tell you this we will see what god calls us to do but i know i'm preparing my heart to fast i want to pray one more time as we come down here with our ifs and amen to 2022 would you agree with me father this morning we receive your word that all things are possible to him who believes. Let me back up. I believe it. If you're listening to me at home, get a hold of it now. Do you believe it or not? If you do, then say with me, I believe all things are possible to him who believes. And when it comes to the promises of God and the revealed nature of God, there are no ifs when we're walking in the will of God by faith. Why? Because all things are possible when you believe. Father, I pray help us with our disbelief. Help us with our ifs of doubt and set us free from any demonic activity that holds us captive in our disbelief. We come now before you. <coughs> Excuse me. We confess our sins and we turn from the things that are holding us back and captive. And we ask for our land to be whole and favorable to build upon. And we say that in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. Last Sunday I challenged all of you, and let me just close with these final thoughts. I challenged all of you to go into your Bibles and, or your Bible soft programs and do a little word study. You could Google it or if you have some Bible program that you use, olive tree or whatever it is. Do a little word study on the word if. I know in my Bible soft, used to be PC study Bible, I just put in the word if, it came up 1,680 times. What's interesting to me is the first if out of the NASB, the New American Standard Updated that I used to study with, the first if 
came in the second generation in Genesis. Because back in Genesis chapter 4, get past here. In Genesis 4, both Cain and Abel, second generation, sons of Adam and Eve, eventually turned and brought an offering to the Lord. Both brothers made an offering. Cain's initial offering was not accepted by God as was Abel's. In other words, he accepted it, but it wasn't as favorable as Abel's. So Cain became angry. Second generation, pride, anger, deceit, and what, what came after that? Murder. Look at what happens. Verse 7, God says to him, Cain, if you do well, if, if you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? In other words, if you do what's right and you turn away from this anger and this jealousy and this pride and the type of offering that you brought, it's a rhetorical question. Won't your countenance be lifted up? Yes. In other words, you know why your, your offering is not as acceptable as your brother's. Why don't you do the right thing, Cain? Look at what he says. And if you, and if you do not, sin is crouching at the door. And its desire is for you, but you must master it. You know what? I know this is all over the word of God, but isn't it about the whole counsel of God? Sure it is. What's he saying? Do what's right. You know what's right. Do what's right. And when you do what's right, guess what? It's going to go well with you. But if you don't do what's right, guess what? Sin is crouching at the door. In other words, Satan is going to work with that bad thing to become even worse and evil and doubt, and he'll just enter in. What happens here? He kills his brother. You have murder. You have lying. All of that stuff in the second generation is introduced. And it came out of an if. Come on, folks. Get this. I don't want to, I know I'm word playing, but if, 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 if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Come on. All right. I know there's a lot here, but I just want to close. Let me just close with this. Let me lay this down. One of my, one of my heroes, Joshua. The man has ministered to me in a lot of ways. I've had some prophetic words over the years that have likened some things to the life of Joshua, and I'm humble with that. Joshua said this to the people. They're in the land. He said, if, if it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves today whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you are living. But as for me in my house, we have this scripture at our back door, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. I want you to know this. Back to one of my George-isms. I'm in. I'm here, folks. I'm believing. I'm going to do my part. Will you do your part? Final prayer. Will you join with me? It's going to be an exciting new year. There's a big if out there, and God's ready to respond. God's ready to move. God's ready to bring the fire. God's ready to impart the vision. You don't have this vision? Ask God. He'll impart it to you. If, if, my people, if it's disagreeable, then I can't do anything for you. Joshua said, if it's disagreeable in your sight, if I'm full of baloney and this church, all we want is your money or whatever you think, you're on your own. I can't help you. You're not my enemy, but I can't help you. But I will tell you this, as for me and my house, and if you will join me in my house, let's serve the Lord together. Shall we do it? Father, I just pray right now, all of the whole counsel of God, all of the whole counsel of God from David, 
to Solomon, to Jesus, back to Joshua, the whole counsel of God. Father, as for me and my house, as for me and my heart, we lay all of the ifs and we say yes and amen to 2022. We know so much is contingent upon us and how we respond to the word of God and the promises of God and integrity and the laws of the land. It's a big mix and there's a lot of ifs in there. But I know this, when the spirit of the law is fulfilled by the people of God, going back to the vision that you gave me in 1 Kings 10 about Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, when she saw what he did with the wisdom of God, she was convinced. Lord, I just pray for the wisdom of God in this year. And I pray that it will be a testimony. A testimony as the church rises up, as the building is built, and the multitudes come to Jesus Christ for saving faith. That's our heart. That's our hope. And Lord, as the pastor of this church, I can only say this. I'm in who's in my house, who's in my camp. And I know multitudes of you are. Let's do this together. Let's do it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Whew. Okay. That's all I got. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Wow, there's a... Wish you could be here Thursday at 12.02. Wonderful presence of God. Wonderful presence of God in the house of God. Look, be faithful. Let me just say this. Maybe you've never given to the church or to a vision because it wasn't yours. Catch the vision. Catch the vision. And let's see what God will do. For tithes, offerings, missions, building fund, go to MaytownAG.com. Just click on the button and give. I'm excited about our in-person service this Sunday. I'm praying God's going to send his fire. God's going to send his presence. Lord, put our faces in the ground this Sunday. That's my hope in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.